It's Thursday, the 12th of December. I hope I got the month right this time. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and today we're going to discuss the recent PG&E bankruptcy settlement as a result of the devastating wildfires that have been occurring here in Northern California. In order to avoid going to a jury trial, PG&E has agreed to settle on a 13.5 billion B billion dollar settlement for victims of four wildfires here in Northern California. Those four wildfires include the Camp Fire, the most devastating wildfire in California history, resulting in the loss of over 85 lives. The Ghost Ship Fire, that was that warehouse fire in Oakland, California, I believe, of, of which PG&E does not claim any responsibility for. The Tubbs Fire and the 2015 Butte Fire. The $13.5 billion settlement, I believe, will be paid out half in cash and half in PG&E stock to the victims involved in these fires. This also includes an additional $1 billion that PG&E will be paying to cities and counties and municipalities and an additional $11 billion to insurance companies that are involved with all these California wildfire settlements for a total of $25 billion from PG&E as a result of these four fires. Estimated losses for the cost of wildfires here in California for 2017 and 2018 alone are about $24 billion in insurance damages. By agreeing to these settlements, PG&E is able to quickly get in and out of bankruptcy by 30 June of 2020. The reason they want to stay on this timeline, this allows PG&E to take advantage of another California state program of $21 billion worth of money towards future wildfire losses caused by PG&E. Along with this settlement was a 700-page report by the California Public Utilities Commission about the cause of the campfire, and in that report, they finally, they're finally releasing the photographic evidence of what actually happened, and it's just as we've been reporting this whole time, it was the failure of a power line on a transmission tower on the Caribou Palermo line in the Feather River Canyon near the town of Polga that initiated the campfire. It was tower 27 22 on that line where the sea hook failed and the line hit the side of the tower causing the sparks that fell to the ground, the dry grass below, that he initi initiated the campfire. From pictures from the report, which I'll post in a link down below, here's a picture of Tower 27-221, failed transposition jumper, and here's where that hot cable tagged the side of the metal tower, sending down the sparks before circuit breakers could shut down the circuit. Here's the picture of the failed hook, and notice how little area remained of the hook in operation at the time that it failed in the high winds. The rest of that hook had been worn out over years of neglect, similar to many of these other hooks found along the same Caribou Palermo transmission line. The Feather River Canyon is notoriously windy, and over the years, these hooks swaying in the wind slowly erode away, wear away, both the hooks and the hangers, just like this. That report discusses 12 violations by PG&E regarding the maintenance of this Caribou Palermo line and this tower in particular. One of them is that this tower was last inspected in 2001, nearly, what, 18, 19 years ago. The company policy is to have these towers inspected every three to five years. That means 
I believe that means sending a guy climbing up the tower to visually inspect the components of the tower. PG&E has been up to this point inspecting via helicopter with a high-speed flyby of the tower which does is, does not allow you to carefully inspect the individual components of the tower like these aging sea hooks. When you do a flyby in a helicopter you're basically able to see are the wires still attached to the tower or not. The Caribou Palermo line is that line that runs down the Feather River Canyon upstream from Oroville Reservoir. It's one of California's first hydroelectric power grids built in the state was first built in 1921. These towers have an expected life expectancy of about 65 years. This particular tower 27-2222 was 68 years old. Some of these towers along the Caribou Palermo line have been replaced over the years as various landslides have taken some of those towers out. Here's a map of the Caribou Palermo line of series of stair step reservoirs, small reservoirs and penstocks and power plants. And to those folks that say, why don't you just bury those lines, have never been down the Feather River Canyon. It is steep and nearly pure granite rock. So let's discuss a little bit further of how we got here and what does the future hold for California? How are we gonna possibly ever dig out of this aging infrastructure hole that we found ourselves into. This latest settlement is frustrating to longtime California residents who remember just back in 2010 the San Bruno gas pipeline explosion caused by PG&E that resulted in eight fatalities and a 1.6 billion dollar fine. As a result of the San Bruno explosion PG&E was put on federal criminal probation and yet still PG&E failed to maintain its infrastructure. In order to understand where we are today with PG&E, we gotta go back and look at a little history all the way back to the previous PG&E bankruptcy back around 2001. PG&E went bankrupt during a, a series of drought years, a lack of hydroelectric power in California forced PG&E to go looking for power outside of the state. They got caught up in the giant Enron scandal that was going on at the time as power regulations were deregulated at the time. Enron was able to jack up the prices artificially and amongst many other factors eventually bankrupted PG&E. By the way this also resulted in the recall election of the then Governor Gray Davis and we ended up getting Governor uh, Schwarzenegger in office and he ran all the way from 2003 to 2011 and then was re and then Jerry Brown got in office and ran for two terms and now we have Gavin Newsom. PG&E is regulated following the guidance of the California Public Utilities Commission, one of the largest public utility commissions in the entire nation with over 1,200 employees. The folks that run the California Public Utilities Commission are appointed by the governor of California and often have little or no power experience. The latest Public Utilities Commissioner is Maybell Mary Bell Batger, a former casino executive and a longtime California bureaucrat. During the terms of all these governors at the CPUC and stung by the effects of the first bankruptcy at PG&E, the CPUC directed PG&E to go out and seek green power, green energy, additional sources of power for PG&E besides simply hydroelectric power. This drive for green renewable energy by the CPUC for PG&E has resulted in a lot of, of solar panel, uh, solar power plants, wind powered power plants, and a lot of new renewable energy for PG&E. And California has since doubled down on this effort when Governor Jerry Brown signed into law Senate Bill 100, committing California to 100% renewable clean energy by year 2045 with the following goalposts, 33% renewable energy by 2020, 50% renewable energy by 2030. But this comes at a cost. However, this came at the cost of the maintenance of the fundamental 
PG&E hydroelectric infrastructure that results in these wildfires today. Ironically, all the smoke from these wildfires far exceeds any of the carbon footprint gains gained by the green energy that we've been struggling so hard to achieve here in California. So no matter what the source of your renewable clean energy is, of which hydropower is part of that, you still have to transmit it safely over your tired old distribution system. For the want of a nail, a kingdom was lost. One of the other problems with the CPUC and PG&E in general is something we've discussed many times in this channel regarding uh, infrastructure improvements, the events over at Orville and the events up at Boeing, is the replacement of the folks with the technological knowledge to maintain an existing system. Those folks have systematically been retired or replaced over the years with less and less technically savvy folks and more and more bean counter or management type folks and in the case of the CPUC, folks that are more interested in, in green energy alternatives rather than maintenance and safety of the, of the existing system. It's hard to keep and retain these folks with the technological skills and capability as the folks with these capabilities, especially in the regulation side of the industry, as we've discussed before, because once they've established that they have the capability to do these sort of jobs, they are often wooed away to higher paying, more exciting jobs with less bureaucracy instead of sticking around working for as a regulator. As a result of lawsuits from wildfires and other disasters, PG&E is slowly trying to rebuild its infrastructure and get caught up, but it's woefully behind the spending spent on green and renewable power energy initiatives. Some of these improvements are happening right here in my neighborhood already this year. So let's go out front and show you some of the improvements that PG&E is making on their infrastructure right here in our neighborhood, where we're one of the first neighborhoods to receive these improvements. Here in our neighborhood in Northern California, just outside of Nevada City, we're one of the first neighborhoods to get our distribution lines replaced by PG&E under a program that is to replace over 7,000 miles of these distribution lines in a 12 to 14 year period. This year, they got about 150 miles done. The program here is to replace all the old uninsulated wire with insulated wire. It's the same size or gauge of wire underneath the insulation, the same power capability, capacity, but they're adding finally an insulated layer of plastic to the outside of the wire to help prevent the wires from arcing in the event that a tree branch falls on them. Once you add the insulation to the wires, you got to rebuild all the rest of your infrastructure as well because the insulated wires are bigger and heavier. You got to replace the arms that hold the wire. You got to replace the, the telephone pole that selfs, itself that supports the wire and of course the transformers. So the entire infrastructure needs to get replaced. But at that rate, 100, 150 miles per year, according to a recent Georgia Tech report, it's going to take 230 years for PG&E to completely refresh all of the wires in its system. According to this new report by um, Georgia Tech, by the way, Dad is a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech, though he went into the aerospace industry, and the math on this is not too hard. In order for PG&E to keep things refreshed at a reasonable rate of 67 years, they need to step up the rate of, of uh, rebuilding their infrastructure to about 1,200 miles of transmission wire per year it needs to get replaced in order to keep the all the transmission wire fresh on a 67 year basis. Wire itself has a life expectancy of about 83 years. Some of the metal towers that hold up the larger transmission wires have a life expectancy of about 67 years or so. So PG&E is way behind on maintaining their aging infrastructure. And to this end, last year, or in year 2017, PG&E only budgeted about $23 million towards 
aging infrastructure improvements as far as replacing transmission lines. For 2020, they bumped that number up to a whopping $781 million to work on replacing the aging wires throughout the PG&E power area. So where does that leave us today? Well, with years of catch up to get our infrastructure back up to speed, that means the PSPS or public safety power shutdowns are going to be a way of life here in California for years to come. You might as well get the generator hooked up to the house because it's going to take years for us to dig ourselves out of the situation that we find ourselves in today and let the rest of the nation heed this warning of what's happening here in California with your infrastructure nationwide. Every four years the American Society of Civil Engineers puts out a report about infrastructure across the entire nation. Right now, we're looking at a D minus. As we get more information, we'll continue to keep you posted here. Calpocalypse 2019, America's Aging Infrastructure. It's an ongoing theme on this channel. Hit like and subscribe and we'll see you here. Brought to you in part by Santa Barbara Chocolates, Santa Barbara, California. Tell Jason Blanco Lirio sent you. And my over 850 supporters on Patreon. Become a member of the board for just $5 a month. And thank you for your support on Patreon.